when the situation where you find that they must look at the situation. Not necessarily uh, tribal or regional. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, it's Daybreak on Trust Television. We move straight to bring you the headlines by the major newsprints uh, in Nigeria this morning. And as usual, we will start with the Daily Trust. On the front page of the Daily Trust this morning, FG projects 6.7 trillion petroleum subsidy for 2023. Um, you know, that is nearly double. <laughs> of um, the 4.2, 4.3 trillion that is spending this year. 90% uh, of earnings spent on debt servicing, uh, according to the minister. Revenue challenges saw as debt salaries go 4.7 trillion in four months. Despite new petrol price, fuel scarcity returns to Abuja. Um, I think that is the sorry part. Mm. Uh, feels more like um, the, the, the subsidy are baited to enable the NNPC rebrand, and the moment <laughs> the rebranding was done, we returned to, to status quo. You will find pictures of empty filling stations around the Federal Capital Territory there on the front page of the Daily Trust. Um, we also have directly below the name marks terrorism, FG malls banned on motorcycle, mining activities nationwide. You find the details of that story on page two. Reps direct BP to halt planned privatization of five power plants. Um, the details of that is on page 20. And 30 killed, 12 injured in Zaria canoe road crash. That's an unfortunate one uh, there. We also lost two core members mm -hmm. on that um, axis yesterday uh, who were returning from Adamawa. 109 billion fraud suspended AGF Idris for arraignment today. Uh, bandit killed five policemen, three others in Kaduna. ICPC to prosecute 3,657 civil servants as 61,446 verified on IPs. These are the major servants on the front page of the Daily Trust this morning. The next paper we're going to be looking at is the Nation newspaper, which carries this headline. Federal government considers fresh measures to end terrorism. And riders here to say weighs Okada ban to cripple insurgents movement and mining suspension likely to cut funding. AGF, terrorists shift to mining, ransom taking to raise funds. And um, right there at the bottom of the page, 200 criminal suspects arrested in 24 days. Details of that story on page six. And right there at the top of the nameplate, Nigeria, others get $14 billion COVID cash, says World Bank. And federal government takes 3,657 civil servants before ICPC over IPPIS. NCAA withdraws Dana Air license and Otto Atiku has approached me to plead with Wiki. Still on the front page of the nation, federal government to spend 6.27 2 trillion naira on subsidy next year, says Finance Minister. And ASU strike, 560 billion naira more needed to pay varsity teachers. And right there at the bottom of the front page, US President Biden contracts COVID-19 and JAM fixes 140 as cutoff point for admission. These are the major headlines on the front page of the Nation newspaper this morning. We move on straight to the Daily Sun. And the major headline on the Daily Sun has to do, of course, with the Okada ban. Nationwide ban on Okada looms. Um, FG also mores ban on mining uh, as police allege plot to attack Kano. You will find the pictures of the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, and the new resident electoral commissioner for Kogi State, Dr. Harley Gabriel Longpet in Abuja uh, yesterday. The second major headline uh, on the front page of the Sun newspaper this morning reads, Nigeria to spend big on subsidy next year. The FGA marks 6.7 trillion and records 3 trillion deficits in four months. And you have a belt there group get caught back in to file perjury case against Tinibu. 
uh, on the side, jump pegs, varsity, cutoff mark at 140, 100 for Polytechnics. Says only 378,639 out of the 1.7 million secured above 200, uh, 200 and scraps napped for direct entry. Peter Obi, Buga, Bianca, Putin, most trended in the first half of 2022. That is according to Google. Reps order BPE to halt sales of five NDPHC power plants. 2023, be neutral, emulates Jonathan, elder statement tells Buhari. No identified treasury looter will be reverse governor, Wiki, vows to prosecute Amechi Co. Can reinstate commitment to issuing voting directive to members soon. Census, no religion, ethnicity. Question, no religion or ethnicity question, says uh, the National Populations Commission. And right beside uh, the name marks there, we have IPOP draws battle line with Ebubayagu, places two million era bounty on his commander over Awamona's killing, dismisses seat at home today. Political opponents igniting crisis in Imo, according to the governor. These are the major headlines on the front page of the Daily Sun this morning. Next, we'll take a look at the Punch newspaper, which carries this major headline, 6.7 trillion Naira fuel subsidy. Revenue falls by 1.89 trillion Naira. Nigerians face tougher times. And it has riders here that say states, federal government will be crippled, says Finance Commissioners Forum. And using revenue to service subsidy debts, others dangerous, say experts. Federal government spending deficit rises to 3.09 trillion naira, says a report. That is the major headline on the front page of the front newspaper. Towards the bottom of the page, NYC mourns as two corpus die in crash. Details of that on page 14. Jam releases cut off, says admission ends December 31st. Um, 109 billion naira fraud, EFCC arraigns ex-AGF Idris today. Stranded woman begs nursing mother for accommodation, steals baby. That is on page four of the punch. And INEC records 334 pre-election court cases. Lagos policemen assault rob driver of 50,000 naira. Details on page four and five. Kujie minus motorcyclists fault federal government's ban. That is on page 17. On the top of the nameplate there, NCAA grounds Dana. Angry passengers vandalize airline counter. That is on page 20. Perjury. Court permits NGO to pursue Tinibu's prosecution. And power generation crashes to 3 megawatts. Federal government begins probe. DSS report warns against protests. Ngige tells NLC. And that is on page 28. Reps probe NMPC's multi-billion dollar JV deals. And pension operators invest 1.99 trillion naira via bank placement. These are the major headlines on the front page of the Punch newspaper. And we move quickly to the Guardian newspaper for today with the major headline. Nigeria on fiscal cliff as debt service trumps revenue. Petrol subsidy near 6.7 trillion. Fiscal deficit exceed 3 trillion in four months, 78% of FG spendings goes into debt payment, personnel cost, fresh modalities for NNPC remittance to FAC underway, labor governors agree on subsidy removal behind closed doors, says Agba, and uh, NMDPR blames rising global energy costs for fuel for price instability. And uh, you have the second major headline, Nigeria's slow, tedious road to herbal medicine development. I think that's a special pull out there with the Minister of Health and the DG of NAVDAC. Reb, opposed sale of five power plants. Chaotic scene at Lagos Airport as stranded travelers protest Dana Air closure. Uh, these are the major headlines on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. The next newspaper we're going to be looking at is the Blueprint newspaper, which carries this headline, Terrorism, FG considers ban on motorcycle operations, mining activities. Says population of Okada riders less than 20%. And another rider here that says to cut terrorist funding sources. Another rider here says, Kujie jailbreak officials behind negligence to face severe sanctions. Details of that major story can be found on page six. 
334 pre-election cases on intra-party crisis in court, says Yakubu. And INIC publishes candidates' particulars today, swears in Longpet as new REC. National Assembly Complex Rehabilitation to GOP 30.2 billion Naira, says the FCT Minister. Perjury Court grants request for Tinubu's trial and... Um, Divestments FG urges indigenous oil companies to take over IOC's assets. And um, right there on the below the name last, Nigeria to spend 6.27 trillion naira on fuel subsidy in 2023, which comes with riders that say records 3 trillion naira deficit in 2022 budget earns 1.23 trillion naira in four months. Governors, labor leaders back removal in house, deny in public. Agba and federal government may, and it says federal government may not be able to fund capital expenditure. Details of that can be found on page six. Now, these are the major headlines on the front page of the Blueprint newspaper this morning. And moving on to the Nigerian News Direct, um, it's also staying with the issue of subsidy amidst for price hike. FG proposes 6.7 trillion subsidy for 2023. And right there above the name marks, we have Oigbo, Agbado passengers train to begin operations in the first quarter of 2023. 109.4 billion fraud. EFCC arranged SAC Accountant General Idris, three others today. Terrorism. Nigerians knock FG over proposed ban on Okada operations. And down there we have someone who promises best hospitality as world converges on Lagos for cultural tourism fair. NDLA arranged ban 28 for allegedly trafficking 4.1 kg of cocaine. Um, we will now take a short break. Uh, when we return, we will be joined by our guests to look at the papers in details. Please stay with us. When the situation where you find that they look at the it's not necessarily uh, a tribal or regional. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust TV's Daybreak this beautiful Friday morning. So we're reviewing the papers and we've just taken a look at the headlines uh, this morning. And right here in the studio, we have um, a newspaper review uh, uh, in the studio and that's um, Nuruddin Abdullah, the editor-in-chief, 21st Century Chronicle. Welcome. Editor. Editor. Okay, well, editor. You keep rejecting this promotion. <laughs> <laughs> we keep promoting you and you keep rejecting it. <laughs> uh, but, um, 21st Century Chronicle, and he's here right here in the studio to help us analyze these headlines. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, so the main headline or the main story today is, um, is the subsidy issue. Paying over 6.7 trillion naira in subsidy payments. And... Um, if you, if you tie that with the recent rebranding, so to speak, or commercialization of the NMPC, which we have been told will no longer be the cash cow of the federal government, that it will no longer go there to take monies from NMPC to do all these things, what does that portend for the Nigerian economy? You see, um, the whole thing uh, is full of contradictions. Hmm. Many Nigerians, uh, when the PIA was passed and assented to by Mr. President, uh, we applauded him seriously, but we did not envisage commercialization. What we thought should be done was privatization. The government should hands, should hands off. Okay, we are spending nearly the same amount this year. We budgeted four trillion for subsidy in 2022, but the World Bank, IMF, are saying that no, the figures may rise to almost six trillion, and we are vindicated because already we are projecting. MTF was was submitted recently, and look at the figures: six trillion. Do you know why it is a contradiction? Unfortunately, the Buhari administration is spending this huge amount 
somebody you remember. He won elections in 2015 on the credence that he doesn't even believe in subsidy. And how much was the subsidy? 2014, 2013, how much was the amount? That's the one third of what we are spending now. Coming to looking at the, this huge humongous expenditure with what you call the rebrand in the Confucius, the federal government, okay, we are all uh, shareholders, right? Mm. <laughs> I'm not Ministry of Petroleum <laughs> Resources, mm. Ministry of Finance. It's all government, which is the problem. Look at what energy experts are saying is. Whatever it is, an NPC should be run like an LNG. The federal government is the biggest shareholder, mm. but it has zero control over the management. People that go to Dubai, Malaysia, Cyprus to read Agric, to read PhD or religious studies are not added into LNG as workers, as the case may be. Mm. They don't have a blotted workforce. Hmm. It is being run like any other private firm, like Shell, like Chevron. I want to feel. So that is the confusion. Okay, now, this is what the law says. But look at even what the, the now, not the GMD, right? Hmm. Group Chief Executive. <laughs> He said that uh, when he, t he was asked, uh, I think two days ago, about um, the FAC remittance, he said, no, it is MTR remitting anything to the federal government? No. Hmm. But now the whole thing now, okay, we all have, uh, Marlon Sunday has shares, you have shares, I have shares, hmm. but holding in trust by the Federal Minister of Finance, hmm. Federal Minister of uh, Petroleum. The same government. Hmm. So look at it now. So you just look at the figures now. These figures are coming from the government officials. Six trillion. Not subsidy, not a subsidy payment. What do you call it? Under recovery. Mm. And it is being done by an NPC. So let's, they have just taken off uh, some couple of days ago. So who will be paying the subsidy? Is it from the dividends <laughs> of the federal government? It's from our own dividends. Okay. Yours and mine. So what has changed? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the confusion. Mm. So uh, for the ordinary Nigerian, what, what, what does it make, for instance, for a resident in, um, in Abuja to wake up to all of these stories and just the very next day, the queues return to, <laughs> to, to Abuja? <laughs> What exactly is going on? I mean, we have seen uh, the, 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 the songs in the mouth of the average Nigerian is that we've been on this road before. We saw a Nigeria that never landed. I mean, is this the case of, an, of another... It never, took, it never took off. <laughs> it never took off. Oh, well. well so what, what is happening, really? I think my understanding is this. You know, um, the government is playing politics with the PIA. Mm. If the PIA, for instance, as a tease, will be implemented to the letters, if we are going to implement the letters and spirit of the PIA, we we'll have problem. Why? Because there will be total deregulation. Mother mm -hmm. Sunday, as long as you are deregulating and you are putting cap, cues must remain. Mm. That's just the reality. Mm. What is the dollar now? Six Are the major dollars. marketers getting forex from the CBN? Mm. No. Yesterday it's almost six hundred and forty okay. something. Mm. So Malin Sunday as the oil marketer would go to the black market and so source his forex at six forty. He will bring the foil. And you will come here and you are expecting him to sell by one sixty five. Mm. Something that you have capped six, seven years ago. Mm. How much was the dollar? Even officially. Now the dollar, the official window is um, 430. 
Now you have even been eliminated from those to mm -hmm. benefit from mm -hmm. the um, CBN Forex. So no, deregulate. If you want to shoot, shoot, don't talk. Mm -hmm. So that's what the government should do. But you know, they have been clever about half. And that's why the whole thing is being complicated unnecessarily. We, we continue to Pray. monitor development <laughs> <laughs> in this space, <laughs> which is what we have always done. And of course, like you said, continue to pray mm -hmm. uh, that someday we will come out of this umbrella. Um, it's difficult to be a Nigerian, honestly. You, it's, it's hard work enough. Uh, you don't have to do any, any other thing to be given a certificate of survivor, as some Nigerians will say. Uh, but yesterday, we were inundated with another news. Uh, this time, uh, the government seemed to have come up with an almighty solution to the issue of terrorism, and that would mean banning Okada from <laughs> everywhere across this country. I mean, as, as a Nigerian who understands how the dynamics of the everyday living uh, of the average Nigeria down below the pyramid. Who doesn't even understand who you can actually count how many times he sees a car in a day in his locality? What does this mean? I don't know. It, it was the Apex uh, Security um, Council. Council that took that decision, mm. that is considering that decision. So I don't know the information at their disposal. You know, since um, Ibrahim Babangida's regime, mm. robbery has been maybe capital punishment. Mm. Or even before then, if the military regime, you know, yeah. um, ro convicted robbers, you know, have been shot, shot at mm. the bad beach, you know, I want to say, have that stopped robbery? Mm. No. So what's... Yeah, the, those uh, security chiefs there are uh, mulling to do is simply cutting the head because we have a headache. Mm -hmm. Come to think of it, Okada, of the call it Abi, mm -hmm. is the major means of transportation in Nigeria. Because this is a country that has near zero policy on public transportation mm. system. Mm. Zero policy on this. Boko Haram incidents. Mm. Bandits and even kidnappers. Boko Haram and bandits had been gathered long ago as terrorists. This has been done after so many uh, presidential orders of shoot aside. Mm. Over 90% of the states have made kidnapping for ransom a capital punishment. Mm. How many kidnappers have been prosecuted mm. or jailed? That is one. The laws are there. Hmm. When we see bandits migrating in their hundreds, hmm. Okada riding bandits migrating, they are terrorists. What we expect from the, the, the security agencies is to use their satellite if they have drones or even local intelligence send a fighter jet mm. clean them up they don't do that we were told by different government officials that okada riding terrorists invaded kuji mm. prison got access into the facility Preach to the inmates, shared transport money, took away their members. So now, okay, are you saying that maybe the, the bandits were coming and they were at the checkpoint by the gas brigade 
and they say, okay, because you know there was no ban on Okada, mm. and that's why they were allowed access. Mm. No. No. The issue is simple. Mm. Who, if you let's assume that you know, there will be a ban on Akada, who can even implement it? <laughs> the bandits in the northwest, north central, the Boko Haram in the northeast, they are not they are not in the urban centers moving with the Akada. No, they are in the forest. Mm -hmm. Have a field day. Mm -hmm. Who will go there and, and, and implement that, <laughs> that, that ban? <laughs> So I don't know, you know, the, the government sometimes when they, when they talk of uh, issues, you know, it seems that they are actually uh, isolated mm -hmm. from the reality. Mm -hmm. There are areas whereby the only means of transportation, when a woman is having a baby, mm -hmm. she will be mounted on our cada and, and taking maybe 10, yeah. 15, 30 kilometers to, to access mm -hmm. the medical facility. facility. Now you are banning that. Because of uh, and there's also the question of what do you do, what do you do with the legitimate Okada um, people that actually use that as their means of livelihood? Actually. What do you do with those people, those those youth, those teaming youth that are actually using that as a means of livelihood? And you we're know, going into an election year. The minister, no, it's just you know sometimes it, it's just uh, rhetoric. I don't mm. think they can even do it. Mm. Because even yesterday he said that no, um, the government will not uh, appease some individuals. When we're talking about the issue of national security. Mm. So you just think, okay, bandits are terrorists. Mm. But they are crossing Abuja Kaduna mm. Highway freely. Mm. They attacked. You know, they said that in those days, you know, they said that there is one, particularly from the Christian brother, they said that there is the one kind of motivation or something. I'm a moving train. I'm unstoppable. Mm. But now, moving trains are being stopped. <laughs> <laughs> moving trains are being stopped yeah. by terrorists. A facility left the 40 kilometers to where the president sleeps has been attacked. Even military bases have been taken. Mm. Look, look at that. Uh, so now, okay, you ban Okada. Now you created an entire brand new industry mm -hmm. for civil defense and the police <laughs> <laughs> to be extorted. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> that is it. Amazing. So please, That's let's have uh, something. We have Tucanos, I mean. Mm. Where are the Tucanos? If Okada, if Okada riding bandits, interrogators can invade Abuja, they say more than hundreds. They came to a facility less than 10 kilometers from where the president takes up, mm. surrounded by all the military facilities. They bulldoze their way, preach, share transport money, left. None of them, there was not a single body. It's, um, so sometimes uh, the average Nigerian wonders um, if the government actually truly sit back to review even previous decision of it. At some point, we shut down the marks uh, everywhere in the north in mm. a bid to cut communication among these people. We were hoping that during that shutdown, there would have been some heavy mop-up operations. That mm. didn't happen. We were seeing skeletal intervention. So you hit Zamfara, they move into Kebi, then they move into Niger, then they move back into Kaduna, then they move to Kasina, then they move to Sokoto. You, you wonder whether we don't have the coordinating abilities to actually simultaneously coordinate operations. Uh, but we are seeing these guys coordinating operations across, exactly. across wide geopolitical uh, zones. and, and attack with zero training. You know. Uh, so it, it's unfortunate. We move on to the next issue that seemed to, uh, it, it got some of us uh, wondering yesterday, I'm sure yourself inclusive, when. Uh, we we're looking at the stories that came in. The 140 peg by Jab for, for <laughs> a student. 25 years ago, uh, when I took Jab, it was 210, 220 mm. for a social science course. I mean, it would be around 250 or thereabout for a medical science course. What is happening? 
Uh, why do we just continue to lower the bar? And, uh, does it, is it even important to even take these jump exams anymore? What, what, what was it that hit you the moment uh, you got that information? That the system is collapsing. Mm. You know, when, you know, it raised uh, serious uh, dust on social media. Mm. But I said, I don't know, the people in jam are being realistic. Mm. You understand? They are being realistic. Okay. The quality, uh, Mr. Sandy, is not there. Zero. That is it. Mm. We are doing the same thing for even entrance exams into the Unity schools. Mm. You took uh, jam, I took jam, you took WAEK. Mm. Yes. You remember? <laughs> when, it was, when, 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 time, when it was WAEK. When it was WAEK. When it was WAEK. <laughs> yeah. There was one paper I took in my school, and I took well, only two. Two of us there were there. It was a public school mm. with about 10 supervisors, including security. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But now parents are paying money. No special centers. To have their children helped. Mm. Even in jam, parents are sitting for their kids. Mm. So why wasting all the time? Mm. So that's the problem. Long, more than 50, more than 20 years ago, in one private school in Kaduna, a nephew of mine was telling his mother he was to sit for JC mm. that the school is getting money, that his mother should go and pay money mm. so that during the exams, women his took, teachers took, women took should help him. Yes. Mm. That was 20 years ago. I could not believe it. Mm. I went to a public school. Mm. So, those who graduated using Expo, that is it. Hmm. Using you know, product of special centers. <laughs> yeah. We are professors, we are parents are paying money hmm. so that their children will pass with flying colors. Have graduated, they went to the university, hmm. continue in that same Yes, hmm. and they are in the public service right now. They there. pay lecturers with everything and they got the good grades hmm. and they got jobs. And we are here. Mm. Yeah. And some of them are being assimilated by the system mm. to teach. Amazing. So what do you expect? Amazing. So, uh, Amazing. Uh, seriously, Jan is being realistic. <laughs> <laughs> With the 140. So it's maybe, easy. apart from maybe they're making even money, maybe in the next couple of years we'll even scrap it. Mm. Mm. It's, it's unfortunate. I remember... Exactly. Uh, at some point I was asked to help with um, some collision uh, at my alma mater and I saw the entry results of some of my colleagues. I was at first taken aback because they came in with all the distinctions in this world. Mm. And, and then I sat in the same classroom with them over a five-year period, and I was struggling to see the distinction that, 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 mm -hmm. they came with. that reflected, you mm. know, the colorful results uh, with which they, they struggled all through. More than two-thirds of them fell off uh, along the way. So you can reconcile what they were presenting at the point of entry and the capacity, the mental capacity they showed mm. as the journey uh, progressed. So much to talk about, so much to digest from uh, the front pages of the papers this morning. Uh, but that's the much we can take from our in-house reviewer, Marlon Nuruddin Abdullah, the editor of 21st Chronicles, 21st Century, Century Chronicles, sorry for mixing that up. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you join us this morning. Thank you very much. And to provide those very insightful um, uh, perspectives to the issues. We will take a breather. When we return, the show continues. Please don't go away. When the situation where you find that they look like the Not necessarily uh, tribal or regional.